Devon. Shh. Why did you make that sound? Shh. Joe, we're not supposed to talk. Why not? We're watching a movie. That was not an answer to my question. We're not supposed to disrupt them all around us. There is no one here. Oh. Where'd everyone go? The movie has ended. No, it hasn't. Credits are a signifier that the movie has ended. Nah, classic mistake. post credit scene. Why are you wearing paper glasses? Uh, you're wearing them too. I am? Yeah. Did How you did enjoy you not the know? movie? What? Did you enjoy the movie? Oh, uh, it was fine. Maybe Sonic the Hedgehog would have been a better choice. <laughs> Why? Because you are a fan of Sonic. I mean, I, I like the games. You enjoy playing generic games? What? You enjoy playing generic games? No, I meant, uh... What, what gave you that idea? You mentioned that Sonic had generic gameplay. When did I say that? Three weeks ago. Oh, you mean the last time we were talking about Sonic? Yes. Yeah, no, I meant the, the 3D games. You do not enjoy the 3D Sonic games? No, I like the 2D ones. What about the 3D games do you not enjoy? I don't know, they, they just feel weird. Please describe how the games feel weird. Hmm? I don't know, they're just weird. I apologize, viewer. What? Could you be more specific about why 3D feels generic and 2D does not? I don't know, I guess because the 3D Sonic games use the same game design as the 2D Sonic ones, and it doesn't really work well in 3D. The 3D Sonic games do not work? Not really, no. How do people play them? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh no, uh, sorry, you meant, uh, no, the games work. People can play them. It, it's just the... 2D game design that they use in the 3D environment doesn't really translate that well. You also mentioned Miyamoto and Mario. I did? Oh, you meant, you meant three weeks ago. Yes. Yeah, Miyamoto was the game designer for Super Mario Bros. What does that have to do with 3D game design? Well, he also designed Super Mario 64. And those games have similar design like Sonic? No, Super Mario Bros. and Mario 64 are vastly different from each other. How so? Well... Name any mechanic in Super Mario Bros. Jumping. Okay, so in Super Mario Bros. you have a single jump. And in Super Mario 64 you have a triple jump. A long jump. A backflip. A wall jump. A climb jump. And a cartwheel jump. Why are there so many kinds of jumps? Well, Miyamoto was trying to create a fun way to move in the 3D environment. You know, the player couldn't just move for moving's sake. Why not? And probably because it'd feel boring, like, you know, generic, like antithetical to exploring a 3D world. But it could be done. Well, I guess so, but what would the player do? The player would move forward. Toward what? The goal. What is funny? <laughs> it just, it sounds like you're describing Sonic. Is moving forward generic? Well, it can be, depending on the design. In Super Mario 64's case, the type of 3D design they created was a free-roaming Mario in an open area. Not all 3D worlds are open? Well, no. But think about games like uh, Star Fox or Super Smash Bros. In those games, the gameplay only happens on one axis, even though they're 3D. Then what is so interesting about the design of Super Mario 64? Well, because it's in an open area, and that environment is a design problem. An open area does not seem like a problem. Well, imagine you're the designer, and you're trying to create a challenge for the player. Say, like, the player is in an open field, and you placed a Goomba in front of them as a challenge. So what's to stop the player from going this way? Or this way? There is a simple solution. What's that? Block off the areas you do not want a player to access. Well, yeah, you could do that, but now you've created a single-access gameplay. The world isn't open anymore. How did Super Mario 64 present challenges then? They were presented as puzzles. But Super Mario Brothers was an action game. Well, yeah, but it had to change in order for the player to keep free roaming in this new kind of environment. Like, think about that jumping mechanic again. In Super Mario Bros, you could design a simple challenge for the player, like a large gap, or two Koopas in a pit, or simply test how far the player could jump. Every single challenge could be designed to the pixel, meaning the designer could know exactly how far is too far. However, in 3D space, you might be able to measure the same distance, but what if the player jumps slightly to the left, or slightly to the right? You can't know where the player is going to be at any given moment, or how the player is going to approach these jumps, so the challenge can't be as straightforward as it was before. So the gameplay changed? It did, and it changed to something that transcends spatial awareness. Puzzles. 
Super Mario 64 had stars that the player needed to find. This enabled the player to search, and they take the entire map into consideration. They're not following a guide or a marker, they're moving around the entire 3D space to discover. How does the player know where to go? Well, the star was presented to the player as a riddle, and they read the riddle and discovered what it meant by searching. And they search using their fun 3D platforming abilities. It's interesting when you think about the way that Super Mario Bros. was originally made. Miyamoto wasn't a programmer, like many game devs were in the 80s. He made Donkey Kong, but he based it on the idea that he would be playing an interactive cartoon. He would just sketch out ideas and interactions, and then he would give them to programmers to see if they were possible. After Donkey Kong became a hit, he designed Super Mario Bros. as an entire game that was built off of this platforming interaction. What does that have to do with 3D game design? Because they did the same thing in Super Mario 64. He created the game based on the interactivity of moving around with an analog stick, which had never been done before. And that's the reason why 2D Mario and 3D Mario feel so different. 2D Mario is designed around a scrolling platforming world, and 3D Mario is designed around an open 3D world. I understand. So how does that relate with Sonic the Hedgehog? Wait, the credits are ending. Aw, oh, dang. A scene after the credits seems like a good idea to get someone to watch the whole video. You mean movie? What would usually happen in these scenes? It would be like a small teaser or something, something to get the audiences really excited about, you know, coming back for the next part. That is a great idea. You never mentioned what 3D game design has to do with Sonic. Oh, right. 